Hi, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How you all doing today? Today we're looking at a Maytag. This is the uh, dependable care, heavy duty, electronic control. And so basically, uh, it wouldn't, when we push the button, it would just hum. It would go, uh, and then I wouldn't come on. So basically, we're going to just take it apart. We've already taken it apart. The two screws are on the bottom of the front panel that hold the uh, front panel on down here. Take those two screws off. And then when you take the front panel off, remember the front panel is hinged by these clips here. You'll have to pull the front panel back from the bottom and then these hinges will come loose from the top here. Once you pulled it back, then the bottom, the top will drop down so that you'll clear these clips. Now, uh, when you take this off, you notice I disconnected the white wires but I've left the wires on the door. And this is the whatever wire configuration for the door on this particular model. But you have to be very careful when you remove this door because uh, if these wires take any brunt of force, they may break that switch. So be careful with that. And there are four screws here in the front that hold this other cowl on. And so, yeah, uh, there. He, here's the, are the are the are the skids that the basket rides on. You have to make sure these are good. Otherwise, you'll destroy this this front cowl part. And so anyway. There are four, four screws that hold that on. On each side there are two. And so basically this one, I don't know how it got in there, but basically there was a wash rag that got past the lint filter and maybe they ran the, they ran the wash without a lint filter. They ran the dryer load without a lint filter. And then you notice the the seal here is kinked and so this seal basically was not put on correctly and so it would not work as efficiently if it were put on right. So this seal has to come back and uh, be around uh, the cowl accordingly. It has to fit squarely around that part. So, I'm not sure how I'm going to get this wash rag out of here. It's in there pretty tight. Basically, it wouldn't allow the motor to spin. So, what I'll probably do is have to take this front part off here. This front part. And then just pull it out that way. I could probably cut it up with a razor blade. Oh, there it is. Well, part of it. Okay, so it's done. So that was the cause of the problem. And these people decided to just get a new machine. And it's just like good as new. They decided to get a new dryer instead of trying to have the wash rag pulled out. And so a lot of people do that. They'll simply discard a... <clears throat> semi good machine after they've had it for a couple of years and um, all it needs is something minor okay so here's a trick it'll show you um, how to loop the rollers without taking the belt off and so basically uh, the Maytag belts are different than the Kenmore belts, and so you have to, if you ever take a Maytag belt off, you want to make sure you know how to put it back on. Take a picture of it, or write a diagram of it. I will usually take a felt pen and write a diagram of how that belt is on. 
And so here's the tip. In order to lube the rollers, basically pull the drum back a little bit and st we still have the belt connected. Now this indentation here in the drum um, may catch the belt. So you have to be careful when you pull it back so that that belt doesn't go in that indentation. If that belt goes in that indentation, um, it will not grab the, the barrel tight enough to spin it. You'll hear the motor come on and it's acting like it's running, but it will not spin the barrel. Once again, if the belt <clears throat> gets pulled into this groove here, when you pull it back, then you'll have a problem. So if you notice that the belt has gone in the groove, you'll need to pull the belt back this way out of that groove. So here we see we have the rollers exposed. And these rollers, they're good. They're not squeaky or anything. So, uh, but I always lube them anyway when I have the chance. <clears throat> and then also, we can lube the uh, belt idler from here as well. You can see it right there, the end of it. And you can put a couple of drops of oil on there. But be careful when you pull this back, once again, that that belt does not slide into the indentation on the back side of this drum. Now it's actually part of the end is now is now almost in the groove. So we've pulled it back to the maximum without uh, pulling it into the groove. So basically when we push it back, we want to check that belt here to make sure that it's not in this groove. Okay, so here is my Zoom Oiler, and I have a special mix of Zoom Oiler uh, that I uh, make up. It uh, has a Teflon ingredient in it. If you're interested in my special mix, it's 1995, and you can contact me, and I will send you some of my special mix, and it's guaranteed to work good. So anyway. Basically with my oiler, what I'll do is go to each of the uh, rollers and take and put a couple of drops of oil on each side of the roller. And do the same with the belt idler, but be careful not to get any oil on the belt. So avoid oil on the belt. So that's how I lube the rollers, and the idler is going to be a little bit more trickier, but basically it's back here, and we need to find the center shaft and put a couple of drops of oil on it. And I could tell you my story and give you some coaching tips if you're interested in my training course. Um, it, uh, it involves a uh, personal coaching from me and a link to 100, over 100 repair videos. And I also do service here locally if you're interested. Uh, I do installation and delivery. And uh, anyway, if this video helped you, Otherwise, please send me a donation. It's Bill's Recycling Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. And I can coach you over the phone as well, 707-443-8347, Pacific Time, 9 to 6. Thanks.